Well, hey, everybody, this is Christy Furio with Keys to the Shop. Welcome to another edition of Shift Break. Today's episode is brought to you by the Ground Control Cyclops Brewer from Voga Coffee. Now, the Ground Control Brewer is a revolutionary piece of equipment because the award-winning technology allows you hyper control over a huge range of flavors in your coffee that almost makes it seem like it's a different coffee altogether. You'll probably end up thinking you're just getting to know your coffee for the first time. It does that good of a job. And not only that, not only does it level up your batch brew, but it also allows you to brew hot chocolate, tea, batched iced lattes, and batch cold brew. Um, this is a winner all around because it offers uh, creativity, versatility, and a higher level of product quality all in one amazing machine that's also amazing to look at too. Small footprint, easy to train your staff on. So if having a higher quality product that's also versatile to help you be creative with your menu is something you're interested in, I highly recommend you look into getting the Ground Control Cyclops Brewer for your store. To find out more information, go visit them at their website, groundcontrol.coffee. This episode of Shift Break is also brought to you by La Marzocco. Of course, La Marzocco is embedded deep in the heart of the specialty coffee industry. So many of us have grown up with their equipment, and honestly, the industry itself has grown up around a La Marzocco espresso machine. Now, they've been hand-making espresso machines in Florence since 1927, and ever since then, they've been growing with the industry, equipping us with the best equipment to do our jobs well in the coffee shop. Now, their latest innovation comes in the form of their KB90 machine, which introduces the straight-in portafilter for improved speed and ergonomics, auto flush for increased cleanliness and speed, and also built-in scales that improve consistency and flow and these are all elements that are critical to a successful bar, the workflow, the cleanliness, and the ergonomics. And you get this kind of innovation from La Marzocco because at the heart of the company, they're all about partnering with us to help us make great coffee. So if you want to look into this machine and so much more that La Marzocco has to offer, uh, La Marzocco USA is available to help coffee entrepreneurs just like you get the best equipment for their shops. You just have to reach out to one of the sales directors by emailing info at LaMarzocoUSA.com. You can also check out their website, LaMarzocoUSA.com. Okay, everybody, today we're talking about who you serve. We were talking yesterday about the, um, it, it was on an Instagram chat. On Monday nights, I do this where we talk on Instagram about various topics and kind of riff on subjects within the industry. And one of the things that came up was a question about how should I describe a coffee to a customer who who's asking about a coffee that I'm not a big fan of? So if they have two coffees on tap, for instance, one is this really amazing fruit bomb coffee. It's just like full of peaches and strawberries and stone fruit and you know syrup and whatever else. You you really it's really interesting and you you just drink too much of it that morning dialing it in. It's really your favorite. But then you've got this standard Colombia, or you've got a standard um, Brazil, and maybe it's something that was purposefully roasted to be more accessible in terms of m more people will appreciate it. But as a coffee professional, you're in a dilemma because you're a big fan of certain types of coffees, but not so much a big fan of others. And as an industry, we tend to favor the really esoteric coffees, the really um, unique niche, high end, 90 plus, weird processing methods, all that stuff. And it might cause us to undersell coffees that need to be sold with equal vigor uh, as the coffees that we are personally really big fans of. And so as we talked about this, it came to the conclusion that we aren't serving ourselves when we are in front of a customer and they ask us questions about how's this coffee we have to have an answer for them that is based on the two groups of people that we serve in the coffee bar one the farmers two the customer so one of them is standing right there in front of you. The other one has farmed the coffee and is relying on us to create a consistent demand for a product that they've worked harder than us <laughs> to create for sure. So what we're tempted to do in this time, like I said, is 
to oversell the higher end coffee, as we would call it, quote unquote, higher end, and then undersell the other one because the, the first one was our favorite. But what is the customer looking for? That's the question. And are we doing a disservice to both the customer and the farmer when we are only considering our own personal preferences, making suggestions to the customer? The fact of the matter is, unless I have been practicing that service in others and outward focused mindset for that situation, I'll be caught off guard every time. In other words, if I don't have anything nice to say about the Columbia before I get into work, chances are I'm not going to have anything good to say about it when I'm at work. So you have to do a little bit of work in the off season. You have to have a mindset shift that says, you know what, I need to equally sell the merits of all the coffee we're serving because every coffee, as they say, every coffee has a home. Every coffee has a customer. And if you can sell an 82 or 85 point coffee really well to a customer and they love it, that is success. But there's this weird part about us as specialty coffee people that thinks we shouldn't feel successful because we didn't sell them the really uh, hot coffee at the time, you know. So not only do we need to figure out who we're serving, in this process of giving answers at the counter and recommendations to people. We need to figure out what the right definition of success is for us as coffee people because the decisions we make and how we communicate about coffee behind the bar determines how people think about coffee on the other side of the bar. We create the customer. We create the demand. And we need to create more demand for a wider range of coffees than just the super niche coffees that we tend to geek out about with our coffee friends. So the hard work is going to be looking at the coffee lineup and saying, how can I authentically and enthusiastically sell the coffee that I don't like? How can I do that? Because I want to match that coffee up with a customer who wants it and not do it in such a begrudging way that it comes off as just kind of blah when the customer is talking about it. We need to generate excitement about all of our coffees before we can expect our customers to have enthusiasm or excitement about our coffees. And when we do that, we open up the world to the customers and we present in a fair way all the origins, all the farmers, to all the customers without inadvertently being gatekeepers who create a future customer base that is less than equipped to fully appreciate coffee because we decided that they should only know about coffees that are relatively inaccessible that we're fans of because the whole time we were really just serving our own interests and not really theirs and definitely not the farmers. So I hope that that helps you think over how you talk about coffee, Maybe you can adjust some of your training with your baristas to create opportunity to develop ways to talk with enthusiasm about the whole range of offerings. That's where my head's at lately. And so I hope you have an awesome day and I will see you here next week on another edition of Shift Break from Keys to the Shop.